Hello and welcome to the How To Show with Johnny Guns. In this video, we will be installing and programming a Team Executor Cool Runner Reset Glitch Hack chip to a FAT360 console. Here's what you're going to need to get started. An Xbox 360 console with HDMI capabilities. Next what you'll need is a Team Executor Cool Runner chip from xconsoles.com. You will also need a Team Executor Nandex for reading your console's NAND and for programming the Cool Runner Reset Glitch Hack chip. This can also be found at xconsoles.com. Make sure you order the Cool Runner programming cable for the Nandex as well. The Nandex will also be used to program your Xbox's NAND with the new Reset Glitch Hack image. Here's what tools you'll need to get the chip installed. You'll need a small flat screwdriver or Xbox opening tool for the outside shell on the FAT360 console. You will also need a number 8 and 10 size torque tool. This can be found at any hardware store, preferably Lowe's. You will also need a soldering iron. 25 watts is suitable for this kind of soldering. I picked my soldering iron up at Radio Shack. You will need a small roll of solder. Try to get solder that has more lead in it rather than lead free. You can find this at your local Radio Shack or order online at srasolder.com. You will need soldering flux. I'm going to be using Radio Shack's Rosin Soldering Flux. I'm also using Tacky Flux from srasolder.com for my own convenience in having a smaller applicator on the syringe. Okay, now that we have the essentials, let's get to work. First, we will start by taking the faceplate off the front of the console. You have to exert some force when doing this. It should pop off after pulling from the USB door area on the front of the console. If your console hasn't been opened before, then you will see a Microsoft warranty sticker placed on top of one of the joints towards the right side. I will warn you, if you're under warranty, removing the sticker will avoid that and you'll be on your own if the console decides to fall on you. What I do is just peel off the sticker and remove the residue with rubbing alcohol. I purchased an Xbox Unlock Kit from VGC Repair for this opening procedure. You can also use the small flat head screwdriver to open the case as well. It just takes a little bit longer in some cases. No pun intended. You will now have to remove the hard drive if there's one connected to the console. After that, you will have to remove the left and right meshes that are holding the top and bottom plastic pieces together. These are removed by using this tool or using the small flat head screwdriver. Poke in the sides here in the areas where you can see the little legs connected inside. If your console has been opened before, this will be easier. Once you have those two pieces off, it's time to go to the back of the console. With a tool, you can do all the tabs at once on one side, then switch over to the other side and do the rest. I recommend going to the side with the more tabs first. It's up to you. After a bit, the case should be able to be popped open on the back. Now, go to the front of the console and look for the tabs that are still interconnected with each other. Use your small screwdriver to release these. The last one on the right, next to the USB bay, is always a little tricky it seems. After freeing all tabs, you should be able to pop off the bottom plastic casing. Remember to take off the console's eject button now. If not, it will cause sticking problems with getting the top plastic casing off of the console. You can use your small flat headed screwdriver to pop off the little mounting piece mounted on the drive. When you turn the case upside down, you will see a bunch of screws holding everything into place. Get your size 10 Torx screwdriver out and start with just taking every screw off in a counterclockwise motion. It's up to you which way you want to start the pattern. I'm using a battery operated drill for this procedure. Then you will want to take the X-clamp screws off and this requires a size 8 torque bit. After you've removed all screws from the bottom, you will be able to flip it right side up and take the top off. Start by taking the DVD drive out. 
If your console hasn't been opened before, you'll have a piece of silver tape holding your drive to the front part of the metal housing. I just peel the top of the piece off. You will need to disconnect the two DVD drive cables from the motherboard. By taking the drive out with the cables pulled from the board, it will make it easier to access the area needed for the cool runner chip. Next, you'll need to pull the fan shroud out of the case. Be careful not to break the tab that snapped into the fan housing. To pull the fans, just use a bigger flathead screwdriver and pry the fans towards yourself. They should pop out after a little leverage is applied. With everything pulled, you should be able to pull the motherboard from the metal case. I usually pull it out with the CPU's heatsink. Just a little pull from the front first should allow you to angle it up and pull it right out. Place a little bit of flux to the ports where you're going to install these QSBs. For this install, I will be using Team Executor's Nandex and Cool Runner QSBs. Before placing the QSBs on the board, tin the areas with a little bit of leaded solder. This will make it a lot easier to get the solder to join correctly to the QSB. If you get too much solder on the joints, add a little more flux and use some solder wick to pull away the excess solder. Stick the QSB in the proper position then apply flux to the area you will be soldering. With enough solder on the iron to complete the joint, quickly solder the joint together. It should smoke up a bit and draw the solder into the form of the joint from the board to the QSB. Continue this fashion until all the points are connected to the QSB. This same process is used for the Cool Runner QSB install. Let's install the Cool Runner's QSB now. Again, this is the same process that was used for the other Nandex point. The connection to the HANA chip is 5 traces down from the top trace. This has been noted from many users as being the trickiest point to solder. I usually tape down the cool runner to my bench with some Kapton tape so it doesn't move around on me. All you have to do is flux the pads on the cool runner chip like this. You could use a Q-tip with a Radio Shack rosin flux, but this is easier for me to use the tacky flux syringe. I start with the red wire and work my way up to the blue wire.
After all that is done, I clean up the chip a bit. I then get my double sided adhesive mount and stick it to the top of the video output port. Before I put the chip onto the adhesive I run the blue, green and yellow wires through the nearest opening right next to the south bridge chip. After that, I set the chip onto the adhesive and press it securely into place. I then proceed to solder the black wire, which is the ground, to the metal friction fitting coming off of the video output port. After the ground is in place, I go to the red wire and solder that to the TXQSB already mounted on the motherboard. This red wire is actually the power supply from the Xbox's motherboard to the Cool Runner chip. Make sure the red wire is soldered securely to the 3V3 pad on the TXQSB. Next, take your orange wire and solder it securely to the B pad located on the TXQSB. Now let's carefully flip the Xbox's motherboard upside down. Run the yellow wire up and over like this. On this installment, I'll tack the right angle point with a little glue from a hot glue gun. Not a ton of glue is needed to mount these wires in place. Once I have the wire situated, I solder the yellow wire to the C point in the TX wiring diagram. This will be the FT6U7 point on the motherboard. Now that the yellow wire is installed, let's install the green wire. This is the most difficult wire out of the whole bunch. I like to run the wire up through the X-clamps like this. After the wire is ran to the point, you want to solder the green wire to point A on the TX wiring diagram. This point is at the bottom of the right X-clamp and can be difficult to differentiate between the right point. Just be careful and use a quicker soldering time. Don't let the iron stay too long on the point. For any reason, try not to tug too hard on any of these points. They're very delicate. Okay, on to the last one, the blue wire. The blue wire is the easiest. Run it straight right, but try to avoid this area here by rounding the wire around it. This wire will be soldered onto the D point on the TX wiring diagram, which has a number 2 right next to it. That's it. All the hardware is installed. Let's go back to the cool runner. Make sure the switches on the cool runner are set to FAT and program. Now we can plug our cool runner programming cable into the chip and the Nandex. The black plug going to the cool runner should be smooth side up. After all that is done, download JTAG tool. Click on the reset glitch hack button to get started. After that, you'll have to select what console you have, and if it's a Jasper, you'll have to know what size your NAND is. Select the NANDX as your choice for programming the Cool Runner via USB. 
After that, click on the flash glitch board button. A DOS application will launch and the Cool Runner will be programmed with a file needed for the console you selected in the prior menu. All you have to do is plug in the Xbox but do not turn it on. Hook up your NAND X to the QSB plugs on the motherboard. You are now ready to dump your NAND and build your images on the computer that will be flashed back to your Xbox. Check my videos for another tutorial on how to do just that.